Okay, so we are here in Blender and I'm going to open up a file that we worked for in a previous tutorial. Now you may hear some talking or such in the background. My husband's joining us for this part of the tutorial. What's up? Hello. He's playing Breath of the Wild still and that's yep. the main reason why this tutorial has taken so long. I can't stop. <laughs> so, uh, with Breath of the Wild aside, as hard as I possibly can, we're going to start the tutorial and we're going to bring in the blend that we use when we made the great fairy because it's rigged and it's pretty much going to be the shape you guys are going to be using um, for your model so it's a little easier for you to follow along so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our great fairy and this is um, the workspace I saved it in I'm just going to activate the layer that has her my, her base model not her bones and all the rest of the stuff because we don't need it now what I like to do is, just in case I mess up, I like to click on the body and press, oh, turn on screencast. You know, I'm thinking I really want to save it so that the screencast is automatically enabled. That way I can stop doing that. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to click on the gray fairy and I'm going to press shift D and make a duplicate of it. And just right click. And then I'm going to press M and send that dupe to a different layer. So we're going to move it down here. Now, before we can uh, create our outfit, I want to create the alpha met, and this is uh, not met. I'm thinking about the regular one, the alpha hood. Now, in order for us to create an alpha hood, we have to cut our model up. That way, you can. Um, it helps later. We just need to cut her body up. That's basic. I try to make it sound professional and everything, but in short, we're just going to be cutting up her body into sections and uh, applying the material to it, and then that's going to help us when it comes to scripting. So this is all depends on how much you want to chop the body up. Um, I always say chop each section into eight parts. Now, Second Life allows you to upload a model with multiple. Um, there is no limit on how many materials you can have, but it still pretty much functions with eight material slots so you want to stop it at eight parts per cut so if we were let's say chopping at her arm we would cut right here at her wrist so that her hand is a separate part and then we would make eight cuts along this arm and that would be her forearm and then we'll make eight more cuts up here and this would be her upper arm middle arm and then up here and this is the upper arm to shoulder as long as it's in eight pieces or less um, it would work out so let's, um, all this talk of chopping, let's get in here and start cutting. So this is one of those things where I said, um, if you had, what are those things called? Sliders enabled, it would be a little difficult. That's why I said don't enable sliders for this part. Because if you go chopping at it, it might cause your model to just explode into this crazy, spiny, twister, yeah. F, cluster F of polygons. Mm. Yeah, and ew, no good. So you don't want that. If you experience that happens, then you need to turn off your sliders. So I don't have sliders enabled for this, so we can just dive right in and start cutting. So how do we start cutting? <laughs> you're going to first press tab, and you're going to see all the vertices and edges and everything that makes up your avatar, and this is where we're going to actually cut. In most cases, for something that was already quadded out like this, and just have triangles because of the way it was exported. You can, um, I think the best way I can say this is, when it comes to slicing the body up, quads is actually one of the, the more preferred because it's easier to select. You can still select if your model is made out of triangles, but it's easier with quads. In this case, you can see that this avatar is actually made of quads. It just was converted into triangles for the program it was in before. So if that's the case with your model, you can usually get away with it by pressing Alt and then J, and it will remove it and turn it into quads. This works sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. You may have to run it through something like ZBrush to get it done right. But, you know, this is a time where quads actually work out better than triangles. Um, because I made a duplication of this, a dupe of this, I'm going to show you how to cut when you have triangles and you can't turn it into quads. But for right now, we're going to go work with quads. So once our avatar here is all quadded out, we're going to press A and deselect everything. Then I'm going to switch it from, um, what is this, vertex and edge select down here at the bottom. And I'm going to change to face select because I think using face is a lot easier to do. 
So face select. And when we have the faces selected, um, you can just grab the faces that are here. Now, as much as I love looking at the dark, dark, <laughs> the great fairy's texture, I'm actually going to need to make this a straight solid texture because that this is going to help out a lot easier. A lot better? It's, it's easier and it helps out. It's a lot better that way. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here at her hand like I said before. And I'm going to press L and see what happens. And you see sometimes it just selects massive parts are, that are already here, which is like her wrist. Um, no, we're going to do this right. Alright, so you see group of faces here. We're going to press Alt. Where's it Alt? And we're going to right mouse click. And it usually selects a patch of vertices this way. You can't really get this with triangles. But quads is so much easier. So this is going to be our first part. Oh, wait. I missed a step. I'm so sorry. The first thing we need to do. And this makes everything so much easier down the line. Is we're going to click on our mesh. And we're going to go to the materials. And you see all these materials that are here. We are going to remove them. So that there's no materials on this. This makes it a lot easier when you go to cutting. Trust me. <sighs> so now that we remove the materials. We're going to go back into press tab. And go back into edit mode. Then we're going to select a loop. Here of mesh and then we're going to press P and then by selection and you're just going to keep doing the same thing hold down alt right mouse click check and see if it goes all the way around press P select do the same thing P select P select P select and just keep going alt P selection P selection, P selection until you get up to however much you want to chop. So I'm just going to keep chopping and feel free to think of a chainsaw sound while you're doing this. I know I did the first couple times, <laughs> but okay. This actually is a problem. I didn't look at everything I was separating. If you make a mistake, which is going to happen don't really stress about it you just go back in object mode click on the part that you chopped off click on the main body and then go back into tools and press join and it's back here in the fray so you can go back and recut now let's see I'm gonna get that, this and put this back here join that so I made a mistake okay so sometimes when you're selecting you may not get the perfect cut that you want so you can just go in here and you can press C and, and then select the rest of those till it looks right. But what if you were chopping like this and you see it doesn't make a complete or pretty loop. See if we were to keep going and selecting everything. Whoops, sorry, I'm press C real quick. Alright. So even if I was to select all of these and go here, it doesn't make a, a pretty cut. In fact, it kind of spirals offward down here. We can fix that with the knife tool. Now, I'm pretty sure somebody's going to be like, no, not the knife tool. Well, that's an inappropriate use of knife tool. But, hey, we do things wild here at the Mighty Ginkgo. So, let's see. We're going to use press K and activate the knife tool. And you just slice down till you get the shape that you want or how you want to cut it till it looks somewhat even I guess let's see I always had a problem here or you can sorry twisting all around hope I'm not making you guys nauseous let's see back of the arm it's easier when it's selected Sometimes multiple things we can do here. We can try to keep going. So let's see, let's see. I feel like a paradox, you know, like just take two steps back. That's a trick. If you go two steps back, <laughs> okay. 
All right, so I want to end it right here. So I'm going to cut, use a knife tool, and just press K, use a knife tool, and I'm going to cut all the way around here. Hopefully I, I got it even. It doesn't look like it, but yeah. And when it gets to where I want it, you can just press enter. Maybe a cut here too. Cut here. If there are some uh, edges or so that are in the way, we could just dissolve them. So we could just click on these edges and then press delete and then dissolve the edges. I guess we can go and do it. Dissolve edge, dissolve edges. Mm. I wonder why that's not dissolving. Leave my, t my tutorial look all kinds of wrong. Alright, see this edge, press delete, dissolve edge. Alright, fine. Don't dissolve. See if I care. I'm trying to dissolve the edges. Let's see. Delete the edge there. And that creates a hole, which isn't good. <sighs> That's weird. I guess it just won't let me. Oh well, we don't really need it anyway, so all I have to do is just keep using the knife tool, cutting down and making it at least somewhat pretty. Now, I know I was going to show you how to do this, the thing with the triangles, but this process is pretty much the same. You would just use the knife tool to uh, box off the areas you would want. Mm. When I did it before in the tutorial, the other one, it came out a lot better. I guess now that I'm actually doing the tutorial, it's like, nope. This will look gross. And everyone will think you're wrong. That's what I feel like. Alright, so I'm going to go out the face select and try to see if I can get a better result now. So it's a pretty ring. No, no, no. Come on, come back. There we go. Paste. And see if I can get another ring. No. Oh. Well, I guess some places are thicker than others. Um, let's see. Let's knife tool again.
no, no, no. And then put this here. So all that crooked geometry we had here is now a serviceable-ish loop. Take that, geometry. And then we're going to press P again. Uh, and then by selection. So now, as far as this concerned, it's just a loop here, which is great. So we are going to chop all up her arm. And I'm going to come back when I have it all separated. So I will be right back. And I'll see you guys when I finish chopping. Okay, so this is actually a clear example of how I use the knife tool and stuff. Uh, instead of the com if you got like you know confused with the complex flippery that was the last one. So what I'd like to do is make it so that it, this will be a nice straight loop right here. So what I do is uh, if I didn't chop it away already, nope, I didn't. All right, so I'm gonna press A and deselect everything. Then I'm gonna press K and enable the knife tool. And I'm just gonna click on this edge right here and then drag it down to like right there. And I'm gonna hit enter and it does that and I want to grab this but I think I cut it in the last part oh yeah I did so what I'm going to do here is actually cut that piece off press enter then I'm going to go face Oh, well, that doesn't really help me with this part, now does it? Huh. Zero done missed it. Alright, so. Let's see. Nope, nope, but this is fixable. This is fixable. Let me see. So I'm gonna cut this loop off. Okay, again. Don't worry, don't get yourself in a tizzy. It's gonna work out. So. My heartbreak has never been this good. I'd rather be hurt by you instead. And at the end of it all, my heart was black and blue. Sometimes late at night, I still wash myself with you. Oh, sorry. I love that song. Ugh. Okay, so I guess that wasn't a good example of how to make things straight. Because then it spirals all the way up there. Damn you, great fairy. And your bad geometry. Maybe uh, oh, this is terrible. Maybe I should have used that cute little one that was just a bunch of blocks. No, I had to go for the complex lady, didn't I? Okay, okay, so maybe it won't be as straight as I would have liked. There's something coming from Madam Blind Blind over here. I am. Madam Blind Blind can't see straight. For the complex lady, Zero says. It'd be pretty, she says. Why did her boobs shoot up like that, I ask. Uh, this whole thing is a mess. I knew I should have just paused it, cut it up, and then came back with it looking all cool. And guys like, how did she do that? And I could be like, skill. No. I want to show you how I got there. Something like that. Uh, I guess I should do it piece by piece then if that error keeps happening. Let me see if the boobs check up. Nope. 
All right, I'll be back when it looks cool and all sliced up. So here it is, me still cutting this body. Even though I said I was gonna come back when it's already cut up. It's like, at least I wanna show you that I can do something right. Look how I just highlight those quads and separate those quads. So I guess this will help you out if you got something nice and pretty. You just select it with C, you drag your mouse over, like so. Press P, select. You just do it all up here. So I guess this is probably why those people kept nagging me when they're like the importance of a clean geometry or so. I come from making garments and stuff, so that's not really important. But I guess it's important when it comes to making avatars to have a nice clean geometry scale even with the knife tool being able to cut the path and make it straight it still does make things a little bit difficult so I guess you know if you must make avatars then it'd be a good idea to make it as uh, easy to select for this very reason right now So I'm just about done anyway. I would pause it, but I just got these last two uh, sections here to do. And then I'll be done. And we can go on to the next step. So I'm just going to cut and paste this a little more. We're just going to be working on the alpha hood like for her arm. I'm not doing the whole body. I mean, once you, you cut the arm and stuff, you pretty much got the gist of how to chop up the rest of the body. I love saying stuff like that because it, it makes it seem more uh, dubious than it actually is. We're just going to be chopping up the body until it looks right. Hacking and slashing. Chopping that meat. There you go. You happy? <laughs> All while I was cutting this, uh, when I had it paused, my husband kept singing Butcher Pete. Calling him. It is a good song, but I'm not hacking and. Alright, I am hacking and slack. Ah, Doug on it. No, I'm not joining in the song. Alright, so we have her arm all chopped up and divided. There was a piece that got messed up right here. Which, it be, which I'm going to join back into the main body. Sorry about that leg. Back in there you go. Okay, so now we have her arm all chopped up into rings. And this is how it's going to be alpha up. You don't have to make them as thin as I did. You could have just select this whole part right here and then chop that off and then pull this up here and then chop that off and that could have been your alpha. But I know at the working with a couple avatars that the better the alpha, uh, the finer, what's the word for fine? Like finer chopped it is? That doesn't sound right. There you go. The more finely chopped it is, the the more option you have. But that also means the more work you'll have to do. So, eh, it's up to you. That's why I did this. Okay, so here we go. Back into the tutorial. Now it comes for us to set up the brackets for what would be the arm. Like, the, like, a uh, see, not fancy words, just describe what it is. Now, this is the part where you will determine. I don't know. Just watch it. You'll see what I mean. I can't quite figure out the right words. It's, it's 8 a.m. I've been up since 3. <laughs> Alright, so I want this group of rings to be the lower arm. And we're going to count off. We're going to click on the part of the rings. And we're going to assign it its own material. So, new material. And just for the heck of it, we're going to give it its own color. That makes it easier to know that... Um, it makes it easier. Because you see, okay, that's already got its own material because it's got a color. So it helps you keep track of stuff. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to pick another material color. And you just go down the wheel creating new colors, new materials. You don't have to name it. It's not important. The color, on the other hand, is. Well, it's not either. It's just fun. <laughs> the color is not even important. You're just doing this to keep track and it's visually pleasing after all that chopping. 
So we're going to pack up this body. And we're going to stop at 8. So, wherever. Oh, I see. So that's why this damn body gave me so much trouble. Oh, well, it's too late for that now. I don't think I were in W. Remove doubles. Yep, it's got doubles. That's why this was a pain in the butt. Oh, well. Lesson learned. Remove the doubles beforehand for easier use. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, we're going to chop it um, fine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to find eight. There's eight. And then we're going to stop here and give this its color. So once we have all eight pieces in a group, we're going to select them all. And we're going to join it back together. So you should have eight material groups. So we're going to do the same thing up the other part of the yarn. Click on it, new material. This also helps you see what parts are in there. So just in case you didn't grab something you think you did, you can look at it and it's like, do you have a color? And if it doesn't have a color, you'll know that you didn't cut it off right. So let's see. So see, I, I missed some pieces in here. Looks like it's like a double. So let's delete that. Let's see. All right. Um. Oof. That hurt. Let me see what that's about. All right. So I'll keep on trucking. Although, you know, you don't have to exactly stop at, you know, make eight group, make eight group, make eight group. You can go up the line and assign them all their materials, then group them into eight. So it's all up to you. There's no particular order to do it, as long as you link them back into, you know, a group of eight. When I first did this, I had the technique of making rainbow colors, like, damn. Now that I'm actually recording it, I seem to not be able to make it produce a pretty rainbow. <laughs> Breaks my heart. <laughs> I lost my rainbow powers. It reminds me of that kimono, uh, fit mesh kimono kit. Oh, where he had it was blue and what you call it all over the place. It was so gross. I was like, ew, this, this poor thing looks so depressed. For whatever reason, the great fairy has it's a weird body. And it doesn't have to be exactly eight. Eight is the maximum. So... If you fall short and you don't have enough and it doesn't equal eight, that's also okay. As long as eight is you, eight is the maximum. So yeah, that. All right. So this is the upper, uh, the lower arm. So we're going to do the next segment of the arm, which is the next part. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, did I select everything? Try it again. One, two, three. Dang, going it. Zoom in again. One. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Damn troublemaker. One, two, three, four. Join four, five, six, seven, eight. Join. Click these two. Join it together. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So let's go up the arm. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And then join. All right. So this is going to be our demo space here for the alpha. Now, for you, for this whole body, you're going to want to press tab and then chop up all the body. And good luck. So 
but we're not doing that right now we're just gonna use um, this part right here so you're gonna wanna this is this is it this is it for right now this is as far as we're gonna go we're not chopping up this whole body because nobody has time for that right now so um that's it for the preparation we're gonna go into the next step and oh, that's it for chopping we got one more thing left to do uh, we have to export it. So we need to export this chopped up body twice. So first one is going to be um, actually wearing the avatar. And the second one we're going to export is going to be the HUD. So let's jump in and do that right now. So what I'm going to do is press A, select it, and I'm going to export um, as an avatar. And I'm not going to do the scaling because I want it to be easier, like on ground level. I don't want it to be uh, trying to work on a giant avatar right now. So I'm going to make a, a nice normal size great fairy. So I'm going to just save her in here. Then I'm going to pause this and then jump into Second Life and import it. Although upon like, you know, uh, well yeah, it's a lot easier just to do it here in Second in a Blender than it is to do it in Second Life. So what I'm going to do with our chopped up body, I'm going to make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to press Shift D, then click on it, then press M, and uh, go to a new layer. And I'm going to turn on our scaling transformation modifier, this thing. And I'm going to use the little G block, look G block, green block this right here. And we're just going to flatten the thing out till it's like a pancake. So it's like nice and flat like so. And this is going to be our HUD. So, you know, when you go to click on it, it's like click, 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 like that. That's how I'm going to do it. So, um, oh yeah, I forgot. Sorry. I'm all over the place. It's the, I guess it's because of the scripts. I'm so afraid of having to do the scripts that I don't want to touch. Okay, so even though we have this all here we're going to separate this so let's click on this press a press p and we're going to press uh, p separate by materials and then do the same thing here a p separate by material and again a p separate by materials this is going to be our hud clicky thingy so when we put it on there you just click on the parts so um we did that we're going to press a and select everything again and then we're going to export it as a static um, a static mesh. So collide it here. And um, actually, we can just export it as an avastar as well. It doesn't really. Oh, no, no, we can't do that. It has to be a static. So export, collide a day. And we're just going to do Second Life Opus and Static. And we're just going to name this uh, HUD dot day, and then that's it. So now we can go over into Second Life and um, start the scripting process. Yay! <laughs> Yay.